Hi, I'm Drex, and this is Introduction to Poise Spinning. Today we're going to be talking about planes, one of the most fundamental concepts in all of poise spinning. You can think of planes as being broad, flat surfaces, like a sheet of paper or a notebook. When we talk about it in relation to poi, however, it's usually more of an implied concept. Let me show you what I mean. As I spin the poi, there's only one point it can ever occupy in time, but over time it occupies a series of points that can be thought of as a flat surface similar to the notebook. If I put the notebook in front of me, I can spin my poi in such a way that it appears to be just as flat as the notebook. I take the notebook away, and I think of the orientation that the notebook had as being similar to the orientation that the poi has. There are a lot of different orientations that these planes can have in relation to our body. Let's take a look at a few of them. Now technically there are an infinite number of ways that we could orient a plane relative to the human body, but as poi spinners we tend to focus on just two to three of these. The first is if I were to place the notebook in such a way that I was looking straight at the cover in front of me and orient the poi plane in the same way so that I was seeing the full profile of the circles, we would refer to this as wall plane. Next, if I were to look straight down the spine of the notebook and orient the poi plane the same way, so the poi would appear to go straight up and down along a line that was vertical, we would refer to this as wheel plane. Next, a special case of wheel plane would be if we place the notebook between my hands. This is sometimes referred to as buzzsaw or inside plane. Finally, if we were to place the notebook flat in my hands like this, we would refer to this as being a horizontal or floor plane. Now that we've talked about poi planes, we're going to talk a little bit about plane control. This is the ability of your hands to maintain whatever plane they happen to be spinning the poi in. It's one of the most important and fundamental concepts in all of poi spinning, because it ensures that the poi actually arrives where you intend it to, that you can avoid collisions and thus bodily injury, and finally, that it presents the best possible version of your trick to your audience. Here are three exercises that are going to help you begin to develop your plane control techniques. The first and easiest is to find a section of wall that you can spin your poi against. Try and maintain the plane so that it's parallel with the wall at all times, and walk back and forth, switching between wheel and wall plane orientations. Next, put a line down on the ground, or find one that already exists, and practice keeping your poi plane directly above that line. Now, walk in a circle, both forwards and backwards around the line. You should find that, again, you're passing through both wheel and wall plane orientations, but now you'll also find that the direction of the poi is going to seem to shift depending upon which side of the line that you're on. Sometimes it'll appear to be clockwise, and sometimes it'll appear to be counterclockwise. We refer to this as the plane facing, that is, which side of the plane that you happen to be on. To make a successful transition, wait until the poi is pointed as far away from you as possible before you attempt to change which side of your body it's on. This next exercise is called orbing or globing, and it's going to require that we add one more concept to your plate today, the idea of native versus non-native side. Now, I'm holding my poi in my right hand, so anything that I do on the right side of my body I would consider to be an action on my native side. Any action I do on the left side of my body is going to be non-native side. For example, Currently, I'm swinging my poi on my native side, but I can easily switch it over to swing it on my non-native side, and back to native. To start this exercise, we're going to wrap up our poi so it is no longer than elbow length, and begin swinging it forwards in wheel plane. Now, you're going to think of the plane as the poi as being something like an arrow that you can point to different spots in the room. Currently, my arrow is pointed straight across to the wall in front of me. Now I'm going to try pointing it slightly off to my non-native side, and it's going to come at a bit of a diagonal. Next, I'm going to try pointing it completely off to my non-native side, so that it is flat against me in wall plane. And you'll note, from my perspective, this looks like it's going counterclockwise. Now I'm going to try and pull the poi plane back to point at my non-native shoulder, again at a bit of a diagonal, and finally point it all the way back at myself going reverse in buzzsaw plane. I'm going to switch it back to the outside of my wrist and thus into wheel plane by waiting for the moment at which the poi is pointed furthest away from me and switching from palm down to palm up. It should now be back in wheel plane and turning reverse. We're going to do a complete circle like that again to finish out this exercise. Again, I'm going to point my poi plane towards the corner of the room on my non-native side. So it's at a bit of a diagonal and then completely over to my non-native side, so it's in wall plane. And you'll note, now it looks like it's going clockwise relative to me. Finally, I'm going to point it back at my non-native shoulder, and completely back at myself in buzzsaw plane, where it now feels like it's going forwards rather than reverse like last time. 
Again, I'm going to wait for the moment at which the poi is pointed furthest away from me, and I'm going to switch from palm down to palm up to bring it around to the outside of my wrist, back into wheel plane. We would consider this to be one rep of this exercise. Here's a pro tip for getting the most out of this exercise. You can get twice the practice in the same amount of time by practicing with each of your hands together. This will also help you begin to coordinate your two hands together as well. Begin by rotating each poi in wheel plane forwards and begin pointing the planes diagonally towards each other. Next, bring them all the way around in front of you in wall plane, making sure that your hands are separated out enough that the poi won't run into each other. Here you'll note that the two poi are coming down through the middle. Continue to allow the poi planes to come back at you as though they're folding doors coming inward towards your belly. Eventually you'll wind up with the two of them rotating backwards in between your arms in buzzsaw plane. Switch them around to the outsides and you'll now be in wheel plane but the poi will be turning reverse. Again, begin turning the poi planes towards each other at a diagonal and then bring them all the way around into wall plane so they're now coming up through the middle rather than down through the middle. Again, Think of the two poi planes as being folding doors that are going to open towards your belly. And bring them all the way around into buzzsaw plane, going forwards between your arms. Bring them around to the outsides of your arms, and we'll call that one rep of this exercise. Try and do this exercise five to ten times every single time you pick up your poi, and you'll note an immediate improvement in your plane control. One way you can think of this exercise is that the plane of the poi is tracing out lines of longitude along a globe, with your hand at the core or center of that globe. This will teach your hand to maintain a stable plane in absolutely any orientation relative to your body. Use one or more of these exercises every time you pick up your poi for at least 5-10 to 10 minutes when you're first starting off. Doing so will ensure that you'll have proper technique that will last your entire spinning career. Thank you for joining me, and enjoy the flow. Peace. This video right here was made thanks to the kind contributions of these folks right here. They found me at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signed up to make a contribution every month. By doing so, they got access to a whole bunch of extra footage from the videos that I put out every month, plus which a number of really awesome rewards. If you or anybody that you know has learned something from one of the videos that I've put out, please consider going to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and signing up to be a supporter. Thank you.